We do have Tom Fitton, the one and only president of Judicial Watch, talking to me today about the biggest story of yesterday, which is this IG report on the Clinton email investigation. We went into a ton of detail on the uh, the bits and pieces of what we've pulled out of it thus far. It's 500 odd pages. So you guys are going to have to uh, keep it to Breitbart.com and you can go to the Great Judicial Watch website as well for their analysis and reporting on that. Uh, as well. So there's a lot of details at the start of the show. Those of you just tuning in, you can listen on demand to that. But Tom, great to have you back on the the program. Give us what you think are the the key revelations from this IG report thus far. Well, I think the report generally uh, confirms the Clinton email investigation was half-baked, rushed. Uh, It was uh, something that was done in a pro forma basis. They were just going through the motions. Uh, The decision was preordained and it was politicized. And every decision it looked like the Justice Department and the FBI made kind of came down on the side of deferring to Hillary Clinton, her campaign aides, witnesses, and lawyers. And when you compare and contrast that about what was going on around the same time, which was the outrageous targeting of the Trump campaign in an aggressive way, uh, you have to conclude that it was a protect Hillary, get Trump FBI, and then on top of all, you know, in confirming all this, the text messages and communications uh, with the top FBI officials, uh, among the top FBI officials, uh, showing they couldn't stand Trump and they were supporting Hillary Clinton. That bias is irredeemably compromised, not only the Clinton uh, investigation, but also the related Russia investigation. You know, someone like Peter Strzok was saying, you know, we're going to stop uh, Donald Trump from being elected. At the same time he's doing the Clinton investigation, he's working with Clinton Fusion GPS uh, vendor, um, Clinton campaign Fusion GPS vendor, uh, Clinton campaign vendor Fusion GPS to target Trump with spying that dossier operation. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, we, all, we all knew the FBI was ruined, but um, now we know some details about the extent of it. Yeah, and this is what I think is my takeaway as well, Tom, which is that I don't know if there's anything that was overly surprising, but the extent to which the folks in the FBI were determined to keep the president out of the White House. And in fact, the, I thought the most shocking quote of them all was uh, I, was one of the uh, new five people that have yet to be identified but have been the focus of the investigation, at least the reports that came out yesterday, saying that they're going to do it again in four years. They're going to do everything they can to stop President Trump in four years. They've announced it, that this is what the deep state FBI intends to do. So, so that goes beyond bias and towards activism, I think. Yeah, no, remember, these guys are, are part of the program and the process that led uh, to the Mueller investigation. Some of them were involved in the Mueller investigation. The Mueller investigation uh, is, uh, as I said, irredeemably compromised. It needs to be shut down because we know why it was set up. Uh, these emails and uh, these communications confirm it. Okay, so here's the one thing just to be a, a little bit of a, of a naysayer here, that this does confirm a lot of the stuff we knew. Uh, we knew that Comey was a, sort of a doofus, and, and I, I don't do a lot of name calling here on the show. Um, we knew that he was an incompetent guy. We knew the FBI had a lot of agents who hated the president and liked Hillary Clinton and didn't want him to get elected. That's all things that I, I think a lot of people expected to see. But is there something here that indicates to you that there's going to be subpoenas, there's going to be potentially indictments, heads are going to roll here, and potentially we're going to clean up this deep state that really is undermining American democracy? Well, now Christopher Wray has anything to do with it. Uh, He's the FBI director appointed by President Trump at his press conference yesterday. He said the FBI institutionally is okay, Uh, and he just refused to deal with the culture of corruption at the leadership level. Uh, that this report exposed. Uh, these people weren't uh, just FBI agents in the hinterlands yeah. that weren't doing anything important. This was the senior leadership of the FBI involved in two of the most sensitive investigations in FBI history. Now, whether anything is, is done with that, Alex, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe yeah. as best I can read it, there are and, internal and, 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 HR where, investigations Tom, going on. Mm-hmm. 
And, and, and this is where, and, and by the way, the Peter Schrock is in the HR wing now. So I'm, I'm sure that that's very, oh, cool. yeah, that's what uh, to, to have this. Yeah. So, so that, 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 that makes a lot of sense, but, but this is uh, essentially, I would like to think when I see a guy like Christopher Ray, and we do have clips and we have been so packed up today that we haven't got a chance to play much of it, but well, let's play one a uh, Mr. Paul. And then I have a thought on this. I'm going to get Tom bounce this off. Tom, let's play one a. How our recruiting is doing. I look at how our retention is doing. Our recruiting, uh, we get about 12,000 plus people, for example, trying to be special agents every year. Our admission rate, our selection rate, 5%. That's better than the admission rate at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, or Stanford. And it's not a fluke. You know, we just recently hired a whole new crop of honors interns. So the young people coming out of college who have lots of choices about what they want to do with their careers. We had the highest number of applicants we've ever had for our honors intern program. Want to know what that admission rate was? 5%. So I look at things like that. I look at what people think when they know us, and I look at what people think when they express their views through their actions. I look at our attrition rate. Our attrition rate in the agent population in the FBI is 0.8%. So in my view, the views that matter, the opinions that matter, are the views of the people who know us through our work. And when I go around the country and around the world and I talk to our partners and I talk to the victims and I talk to the people who know us, our brand's doing just fine there. Yeah, and the, I would like to think, and maybe this is me being Pollyannish, but I would like to think that this is him just trying to save face for his department that he's tasked to lead and he's got to deal with these people internally day in and day out and he doesn't want to throw uh his his folks under the bus i'm sure you can relate as the head of an organization i can as one of the heads of, uh, of mine that it would be very this is a difficult moment and uh, no matter if you're identifying real impropriety but you can't help but think that with this attitude that christopher ray has tom uh that he's not taking this sufficiently seriously this is a threat to american democracy and you are not getting that passion from him i don't understand what he was saying there um but the FBI, the FBI doesn't have great agents, and there's, it's not competitive, and it doesn't pay well. And it's not an exciting job once you get it. I mean, the question is, because the FBI could be trusted to handle significant uh, political, uh, sens politically sensitive investigations, and it can't. And um, so his, his comments are irrelevant to the uh, the confidence of crisis, the crisis, com the, the, the confidence crisis. Tom, Tom, he's talking about attrition rates. Who cares? I mean, we're talking about people who are potentially using their power to try to subvert our American political system, their government and, power. And, 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 and he's talking about the attrition rate. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, you know, your your listeners who are government employees, they know attrition rates are low in government bureaucracies because you don't leave before you retire because you lose it's a lot easy of money. money. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's easy money. It's a, that's why the attrition rate's so high. How about everyone takes a pay cut here? It, it really is exasperating to hear this because this is what I think that is relatively new in American life. At least I would like to think it is where people acting as though these obvious injustices that we're seeing from our American bureaucracy and government are, are not actually a big deal. It's business as usual. Nothing to see here. Move along. And I'm stunned by it. That this is just a. I, I do feel like sometimes we're through the looking glass in some of these in some of these news cycles. And this is not the first one. Look, you've got evidence that uh, the president's presidential campaign was trying to be gamed by the senior leadership of the FBI. Uh, that's pretty serious. Uh, retention rates, attrition rates, honors and interns programs, uh, intern programs the FBI have don't have anything to do with that. Uh, but, get, you know, let's get it, get it back to it because I want to talk a little bit about James Comey. You know, it's remarkable yeah, about that. Uh, th this issue is when you look at um, everything almost James Comey testified about, uh, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, it looks like the IG rejected his, the credibility of his testimony repeatedly. So uh, McComey comes across terribly. Uh, the IG doesn't trust his testimony. He doesn't believe the reasons he gives for the actions he gave are persuasive or even uh, truthful. Uh, and it confirms uh, not only that Rod Rosenstein's mental analyzing his handling of the Clinton investigation was correct, 
Uh, but that memo, which President Trump in part relied upon in firing him, um, uh, is further confirmation uh, that President Trump was righter than right to fire James Comey, and he did the country service in removing from the FBI directorship. So a couple other things that I, I want to bounce off of you. Tom Fitton's with me, the president of Judicial Watch. You know, judicialwatch.org, one of the few groups doing anything worthwhile in Washington, and he does a ton of good over there. And uh, a couple other things. So James Comey conducting FBI business on, on Gmail, which is Google Mail, which means Google was reading FBI correspondences that James Comey had. I, I mean, this is this is quite offensive, I have to say. It is, and it's problematic, and uh, the IG does call it problematic, you know, just say that, you know, his excuses don't wash, and it's probably a violation of the policy. Uh, let me just say it doesn't, it, it doesn't have much to do with what Hillary Clinton was doing in the sense that Hillary Clinton had set up an entire system designed to get sure. around the requirements. She do, generally speaking, um, her work on a government system to protect classified and sensitive information. You know, Comey, you know, frankly, it looks like he was using emails the way you would expect a government official would uh, privately, just, to, you know, every once in a while it was convenient. Uh, it's not appropriate, but it's not what Hillary Clinton was being investigated for. So, you know, Hillary Clinton right, can but, laugh but, and tackle at that, uh, but it's, compl- it's, it's, um, it's apples and oranges compared to the criminality. She was involved in. Yeah, I, 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 I mostly agree, but the issue here is not even that Comey had low integrity. It's that Comey wasn't competent. It's just another dumb mistake, and the, the man makes them uh, routinely. Uh, and again, people who listen to the show with regularity know that I don't call a lot of people dumb, but th- this is the – he just – it's so many incompetent moments over and over through his tenure. One other part of the IG report, FBI never designated Hillary Clinton as the subject of the classified email probe. I mean how, what possible explanation is this other than political bias? Well, because it really – it was a kind of an odd investigation. It, in some ways, it was a counterintelligence investigation as much as somewhat uh, – which – uh, makes it, you know, as we've learned with the Trump investigation, the counterintelligence investigation isn't supposed to be a criminal investigation. So they want to have their cake and eat it too, pretend to be investigating Clinton email matter while not investigating anyone specifically. Um, it shows you again, Hillary Clinton was a protected person uh, by the Obama, FBI, and DOJ. She was the nominee and putative nominee for the Democratic Party. And they just were never going to indict her. I mean, they made the decision back in February, it looks like, at least as early as February of 2016, uh, not to prosecute. And that's a good four or five months before virtually anyone was interviewed of note uh, by the agency. Okay, so that's another good one. Uh, the, the FBI covering up the Wiener laptop issue, do you think that this one is a is a cover-up because it was delayed for a month when they were aware of it before they started looking into it? Comey's explanation is he didn't know that Anthony Wiener was uh, married to Huma Abedin, which is, as I said at the start of the show, uh, uh, my, my German Shepherd puppy knew that, and I don't even know if she was born yet at the time. Is this another example of uh, James Comey uh, being incompetent, or is this potentially a lie? I, I just don't believe much of what James Comey says in matters like this, but presume he didn't know. It's not He's not the only one making the decisions. You have Andrew McCabe, you had the senior, uh, uh, mm. you had uh, Peter Strzok, who was, I guess, more interested in going after Donald Trump, as the uh, report suggests, than Hillary Clinton at that point. Uh, look, what, what happened here is they found the Wiener laptop material. I think they recognized immediately the significance of it, uh, and it kind of blew out of the water. Uh, their earlier analysis about the spillage of classified information and uh, criminality, maybe of even uh, Yuma Abedin and aides to Hillary Clinton. And so rather than deal with it immediately, they put it off until forced out into the open by threats of leaks. Uh, what, what an ugly mess over there. Yeah, a total ugly mess. So th- is there any hope for any reform, uh, any penance, uh, any cleanup that can be done, uh, perhaps something involving subpoenas or or, or the, uh, arrests even, especially, especially firings? I mean, it, 
I have zero hope that anything positive is going to come from this aside from a, a news cycle that exposes some of the deep state anti-Trumpers. But is there anything beyond that? Well, not if Congress does, continues to do what it does, which is nothing. Uh, not if the DOJ leadership and FBI leadership uh, uh, pretend there are no uh, problems and not if the Mueller operation is allowed to continue because in many ways this is about the Mueller operation uh, because the same cast of characters set it up and were involved in its operation. And uh, we now know where the Mueller operation originated in this unholy mess of the FBI, DOJ, uh, pro-Clinton and anti-Trump operation. Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, you've been super generous with your time. Uh, last thing I have to ask, do you think that this moment, this IG report, represents the moment where we can officially say the Mueller operation is not legitimate and needs to be shut down? It's an additional moment. Uh, there have been much more significant developments in that regard. The exposure of the Clinton DNC dossier, Spygate, Peter Strzok working for them and then being uh, let go. And then Mueller hiding it for four months. The raid on Cohen's office, the raid, uh, early dawn raid on Manafort's home. Um, it's a list of horribles for the Mueller operation. Tom Fitton, please check out Judicial Watch. I got to keep them going strong because they are doing the, the, the work that most in Washington are just not willing to do. Go to judicialwatch.org and you can follow Tom uh, Fitton all over the social web. Tom, what's your uh, Twitter handle? I actually do check out your Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter guy, but you're at Tom Fitton. Easy enough. Yeah, at Tom, Tom Fitton, Fitton on Twitter. Yeah. I got it. I got in early okay. enough to get my actual name. <laughs> well done. Well done. Is it, yeah, I'm kind of squatting on my own name on Twitter. I don't tweet a lot, but I do have at Alex Marlowe. Thanks, Tom. We'll catch up with you soon. Great stuff. Per Thank usual. You. Yep, yep. This, this is it. The, the, the Mueller probe. And I've always said I'm not a Mueller truther. I thought the president got himself into this mess by firing Comey when he did. I always thought Comey should have been fired within 48 hours of the president uh, taking the oath of office. Um, I thought he fired him at, at the worst possible moment. He raised a ton of suspicion. And I thought that Mueller was going to find something. And now it, now it's just gone on too long. Gone on too long. I, didn't, I never thought he'd find Russian collusion. Absolutely not. I thought he'd find some sort of white collar crime, some sort of light obstruction, something like that, just to uh, make his bones. But then, especially when he was hiring that team of white collar lawyers, but it is um, nothing, just total air ball. And now it's time to go. It's time to go. Time to stop it. 866-95-PATRIOT. Your thoughts when we return on Breitbart.